Welcome to week two of the Ecclesia Women in the Word Spring 2024 study. One of the prayers I have for you as you tackle this study is that you will start to learn what the authors mean when they say a good theologian asks questions. And the more you learn, the more questions you'll have. I'm praying that you will have lots of questions as you read and that you will seek those answers from God's Word. This week's topics, the attributes of God and Revelation, or the doctrine of Scripture, are truly inexhaustible and should leave you with plenty of questions. I pray that God will show you how a deeper understanding of these concepts will impact every area of your life. Let's see what Jamie and Laura thought about them. Chapter 3 is all about the attributes of God. Of all the chapters, this was hands down the easiest one for me to visualize and connect with, which is undoubtedly due to the author's choice to parallel the chapter's content with a movie scene. Although I would love to sit here and pretend to love reading, since I'm a teacher, 10 times out of 10, I would choose to watch a movie over reading a book. The scene that was portrayed in this chapter came from the movie Elf. In this scene, Buddy, an elf who was stranded in New York, heard that Santa would be at the nearby department store. Having found out this news, Buddy is elated and yells as loudly as possible that Santa's coming, he knows him. When Buddy arrives at the department store, he is stunned to find out that Santa is a fake. He didn't smell like Santa, he didn't look like Santa, he wasn't Santa. Although this scene might be a far cry from how we respond to who God is, it humbled me in the idea of how I know God and how that knowledge transfers to how I love God. I was challenged to think through questions like, could I identify my God from a fake? What are the undeniable markings of my God? And what do I do with the knowledge of who God is? Buddy didn't simply know who Santa was. He deeply loved Santa because of what he knew of him. In a world where there is little certainty and minimal security, there are several attributes of our God that allow me to feel at peace and hopeful. God is immutable. He's always the same. When things around me are unsure and I am not certain where God is, I can be at peace knowing that all He is is never changing. My sin, our world, my decisions, He is far greater than these things and is constant. God is good. He knows what is best for us even when we don't agree. God is omniscient. He knows all. I don't have to sit in my room crying out to God asking Him to notice what is happening in my life. He already knows. He knows what has been and what is to come. And this attribute, paired with knowing that He is good, means that I can trust that if I'm seeking Him, He has me exactly where He wants me to be. After learning and praying over the many attributes of God, it led me to a great personal challenge, which is a reflection from a quote at the end of this chapter. It says, We cannot conform to an image of a God we don't know, nor can we worship Him. This is humbling. My knowing of who God is doesn't just impact me. It impacts the worship I present to Him. This truth makes knowing God's attributes not just important, but essential. I think it's safe to say that this challenge is not just for today, but contains enough rich content to last a lifetime. Chapter 4 is titled, What is the Bible? And it discusses the doctrine of Scripture. In reading Chapter 4, some new ideas for me was the idea of general revelation and special revelation. General revelation is seeing God in creation. In Psalm 19, 1 through 2, it says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaim His handiwork. Day to day pour out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. We can't come to know God through general revelation, but creation can give us an understanding of God the Creator. However, we do need to know God as the Redeemer. Special revelation is revealed in the Bible and Christ, which leads us to salvation. It's a special revelation because it's only revealed to Christians after salvation. In the back of chapter four, there's a question asking about a time in your life when you had a worshipful moment in creation. For me, whenever I'm going on a hike or going to the beach, I find myself in awe of creation. When I'm overlooking a view at the top of a mountain, I can't help but feel so small in comparison to everything around me. Or when I'm at the beach and standing next to the crashing wave, I can't help but feel and stand in awe of God and His beautiful creation. Chapter 4 goes on to explain seven different attributes about the Bible and why it should have authority over our lives. The sixth attribute, that the Bible is sufficient, is the one that really resonates with me. I love how as Christians that the Bible is sufficient for us so that we can live life pleasing to God. As a mom of three young daughters, that is something my husband and I strive for. To live that way as an example, that the Bible is what we can look for for anything and everything we need.